Hello, my name is Mike Prom. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the lofted flange tool inside of Inventor 2011. The first thing I'm going to do is start up a new sheet metal part. And inside this sheet metal part, I'm going to quickly just make a sketch. And then I'm going to add a plane. And from this plane, I'm going to create another sketch. Now I'm doing this so I can make my loft and that different plane is going to give me my distance. Also, you're going to note that I'm doing a square to round. And I'm doing this because that's going to be the hardest type of lofted flange to do. So if you can do this, you can easily do a circle to circle or a square to square or a circle to any sort of shape. Now, as I'm doing my sketching here, notice that I'm just using constraints that are built into Inventor, like my horizontal and vertical, also an equal dimension. And then I'm just going to add a dimension um, to give it the final shape of the rectangle here, a square. Now, with these sketches completed, my next step is uh, to look at my loftage flange tool. But before I do, notice that there's sheet metal defaults in here. I can set up all sorts of different styles and standards. If I wanted a standard for um, stainless steel or aluminum or regular steel, all my different bend parameters are associated with that. Now in this lofted flange tool, I simply just select my two different sketches. Notice I do a brake press or I can do to a die, so I have my options. This is great because maybe you're doing a quick prototype, you want to use a, uh, a brake press to you know, see, make sure this is going to work, but then for production you'd like to use a die, um, you know, maybe in the case you don't have the, the money for a die. Just gives you a lot of different options. Next you're going to notice I'm using a rip tool to actually make a cut, because in a loftage flange to be able to flatten it, I have to be able to do a cut. I simply just select my uh, unfold tool and you can see I have a flat pattern. I even have the capabilities inside of here of making changes to uh, my bend numbers. So this is the order in that I'd like it to be bent. Um, in this case it's very simple but that's something where you, if you're doing drawings it's very nice to be able to communicate this uh, with people on the shop floor or whoever is doing your bending. Now, once I have this lofted flange complete, my next step is actually make a drawing of this. Notice when I do a new drawing, it's the same DWG format that you're familiar with AutoCAD. Inside of here, I can simply just place my views. The nice thing is I have a capability of just doing a flat pattern. Now, in this flat pattern, um, I have the capability of adjusting the scale. This is a different AutoCAD where I'm actually adjusting the scale of the view, and then when I do my dimensions, if I make any changes to this, those dimensions, I'm going to stay the same, they're not going to be um, changing like they would be with AutoCAD. Now that I've entered my flat view, I can actually add a bend table. Notice that numbers, like we saw in the 3D view there, my bend order. And uh, this table is automatically, it updates if I'm making changes. Also note, if I didn't want a table, I could add a bend node on each one of my bend lines as well. Now, when I'm giving a drawing to my manufacturing, it's really nice to give them a 3D view as well, just to make sure they have an understanding what the shape is going to be. And then I can save this. And I very quickly uh, created a 2D and 3D drawing for this. Now, as far as DXF, to have this laser cut, notice if I do a save copy as, as simple as just select DXF, and then I can do a DXF of this drawing. Uh, if I was doing DXF here, I wouldn't put that 3D in there, but you can see how quickly I can just save a 2D view as a DXF. Uh, so um, making my DWG, next up, save copy as DXF. If I don't want to do a DWG drawing, if I jump back into my part model, notice that when I do a flat pattern, I can actually just select my surface and do export and I can create my DXF right here. So if I need to get part out real quick, don't have time to do a drawing, I can simply just export my face and then um, save it as a DXF. Now, this next uh, feature I want to look at inside of Sheet Metal is just doing a, a contour flange. I think this is important. People have understanding very well of you know, how you can build up, have a face, add some flanges to it. But a contour flange tool is really nice because you can quickly uh, generate a profile. You notice I just have one sketch with my lines. When I select that line, was my thickness of that sheet metal. Again, that's referencing my sheet metal defaults that you saw earlier. I can give a length, select OK. Very quickly, then I can do my flat pattern by just selecting my flat pattern tool. Now I'm going to add some features to this. Uh, notice that I can do uh, add flanges, I can add hems, I can do contour rolls. Inside my hems, uh, I have multiple options, you know, depending on what you want to do here. It's nice, you know, just get rid of some sharp edges. Also, I can uh, add cuts even inside my bent up feature here. 
Now, I'm just going to add a circle across the bend to show you why it's very important to have a tool like Inventor when you're trying to do cuts and uh, across a bend. Now, in this case, I'm just going to do a cut across a bend that's not flattened. And what you're going to notice is when this actually cuts it out, that it's almost more of an oblong. And, and that might be fine if you want something to go through there. However, when you take a look at the flat pattern, notice that it actually has that bevel into the material. So that couldn't actually be done by a laser cut. Um, however, I have the capability of just stepping up here and uh, selecting my unfold option. And then I can create a sketch just like I did before. And this time, when I add my circle, it's going to cut it in the flat pattern. And once it's cut, I can go back and I can bend this, this tool, refold, and notice how it actually cuts across the bend. So that could actually be done or completed in size of a, a laser program. Now I'm going to jump over into AutoCAD uh, just so you can take a look at how I can reuse this information. Uh, inside of AutoCAD. When I make a DWG in Inventor, you can open that up right inside of AutoCAD so it's the same DWG format. Also, if I come in here and I take a look at my blocks, this actual view has blocks made out of each one of those views. So if I want to reuse this information inside of AutoCAD, I can go back and forth. Like, thank you for your time. Uh, again, my name is Mike Prom with Applied Engineering.